one of the unique items on a Pontiac right from 68 on up was this rubber bumper. Now this caused a lot of problems. Consider you get a little shot in the parking lot, yeah it absorbed a lot of the energy, but the rubber would actually start to crack and the paint would all crack. And you can have a close look at this bumper, you can see where all the paint is cracking. And that's not just coming from the paint itself, that's actually coming from cracks in the rubber. Well, there was a bunch of obstacles Pontiac had to overcome. It's actually a mix of rubber and plastic, a type of urethane, maybe the first ABS type used in a production car. By 1971, like this bumper here, they realized that even though it absorbed energy, you still had problems with it cracking. Heat and all those sorts of things took their toll on large areas, so they started trying to shrink the area. This bumper here is off a 71 GTO Judge, a 455 that we're doing pretty rare car, it's got to be perfect. Well, let me take you through the steps. We've got enough bumpers here from cars that we're doing that we can show you in one simple step. What well, the first step is to use a rubber prep and actually wash down the entire surface so you can see all the checking and cracking. If you have a close inspection on it here, you can actually see where the rubber itself is cracked. So what we have to do here is we have to get rid of the crack in the rubber or in the urethane. There's two ways of doing that. You can start by sanding it. If it's not a very deep crack, you can just sand the entire area out. If it is a deep crack, you're gonna have to use a Dremel tool and you're actually gonna have to V out that area and put in a very special filler. Now this filler is a plastic, they call it plastic surgery. Okay, I won't even make cracks about Tom using this stuff here. It's super flexible and it's designed exactly for this. It's made by Dominion SureSeal and it's a great product for fixing cracks, but it's also a great product if you're doing a show car. Well, if you live somewhere where it's stinking hot in the summer and freezing cold in the winter, like up here, it takes its toll on these Enduro bumpers. So what we have to do is actually put a skim over the entire bumper and make it nice and straight again. The only al other alternative is to buy a new bumper, really not available, so you're finding a used one. Once you've got all the filler work done with this super flexible filler, it's time to prime it. You can't just prime it. This is one time epoxy primer just won't work. It's not flexible enough. What we have to use is actually a high build primer. Glazerit's got your regular high build but you have to add a ton of flex agent in it. What happens is it slows down the whole process, makes everything very rubbery. Now the problem with that is also difficult to work with. You can see after it's primed it's very shiny. Usually primer isn't this shiny. It also takes a, a long time before you can start sanding it. Once you start sanding it, it tends to ball up the, on, onto the sandpaper. And even now, when you've got a little pinhole, you'll have to use Polyflex again, which is a super flexible spot putty. Once that's done, again, sand down the whole thing, 240, 320, put on your last coat of high build, again with the flex agent. Now, if you're gonna paint this, don't just paint over top of all this flexible primer and all the, these very flexible products. When you're ready to paint, you also have to add flex agent into your paint. Otherwise, the first time you tap the front or even bolt the bumper up against the fenders, it's gonna all start to crack. Remember, Enduro bumper, great idea. First of the low impact bumpers um, work great, but if you don't prep it properly, it'll be a nightmare.